Well, thank you for clicking in to see this video. This is the next in my series of bowl making videos. Uh, if you've been following along, you know, this was the last bowl I made and uh, I lost the files to this one. I haven't finished putting all the finish on that one yet. It's been real rainy and real humid, so I haven't messed with that. I got like six inches of rain the last two or three days, but I lost all the files. I didn't get to finish that video and show how it was made. This was second in a series that she had, second in a couple of bowls she had in one project. And uh, the blank that makes these segments right here was made at the same time the blank was for the first bowl. And it was a verse where this one was light, it, that one was dark, and vice versa. So, uh, in fact, I did it opposite of what she did it. On her version of this bowl, this was, this dark area was uh, maple, and I switched to maple, and I don't think that's maple, but it represents maple. And this is mahogany, and it makes, I like mahogany, it makes a really nice bowl. But anyway, the point being, I made that blank, and I made this, this bowl with it. It was left over from the first bowl blank, and we did some multiple angle cuts to kind of get that rounded side. You can see, if you look at the horizon of that, how it's rounded. And every ring uh, was cut twice. Uh, cut, the, cut it with the same angle as the outside angle, and then cut it again with the next angle. And I'll explain that as we go. But I was going to put a twist on this. This may not work. I may be wasting my time. This, I believe, is maple. It cuts and smells like maple. It came in a seconds package. And uh, I didn't have, th this is three quarter inch right here. And this is three eighths. Well, I didn't have any more of that mahogany in those sizes. So I took these three, these are all three eighths, and I made a three quarter inch blank for the bottom part. And then I, this is three eighths maple also. So uh, I'll throw some of the video up on the screen as I was cutting this out. I just cut out these, these segments. There's two different sizes of segments in that blank. And uh, the, the, the smaller one is supposed to match whatever you're using for your main blank. And uh, that's not quite three quarter. It comes out a little less, but I'm gonna have to adjust my angle. But anyway, so uh, is that how I made this blank? Uh, I use the pattern to line out exactly where these go, because you have to get take your main blank, cut it to a size, and then then glue this on it, and then you sand everything down to the thickness you want. Uh, so, but getting this spaced out was going to be critical because what I wanted to do, I wanted to try to do, is actually make it like a basket where you didn't have wood in these holes, you'd have a blank hole. This may not work. I can think of reasons it will and three reasons it won't. And the only way we'll know is to try it. I can see it might be, uh, might be, have to be very careful sanding. You're going to have less, it's going to be a little more fragile. Uh, it'd be easy to break something, I'm afraid. And if you dropped it, it might come apart or delaminate in areas. But I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to use the same pattern. I'm going to use the same procedure because I didn't get to demonstrate that. It's a little different than any other bowl I've done. Uh, so uh, anyway, I glued these on. I got them lined out the way they're supposed to be. Some of them I had to grind the end of them off just a little bit so they would fit up on the blank. But this is the blank. I'm going to cut the bowl out of this. I'm going to mount the pattern to this side. And this comes out, she, she, in her pattern, her project, she wanted that to be one inch. And this is uh, 15 sixteenths, I think, or something like that. I'll have to remeasure it. And I, what I'm going to do is go to scrollmania.com because the, uh, the rings are a quarter inch thick this way the quarter inch and I got to figure out the angle for those first cuts and then they're going to change the angle as you go in uh, I think she started at 14 I think I'm gonna have to start at 14 and a half because I'm a little bit off it I'm 0.97 inches instead of one inch so uh, I'll recheck all that and I'll make some notes so I can know which 
which uh, angles I needed to use when. Now, I used her angles on this one, and it was off a little bit. I had a lot of mismatch on the outside, and I adjusted the angles I went. I just never got it to line up. I just had to do a lot of sanding. That wasn't too bad. Mahogany sands pretty well. This is going to be a little harder to sand, but it'll be sandable. It'll have to be. We won't make a bowl out of it. So, let me get a little uh, research on the uh, double on the uh, angle. I'll double check that. I'll make my notes so I know uh, which angle to use when. Okay, I've gone over her steps and her angle requirements that she gives, and I've checked it with uh, a scroll mania with the thickness I have. There's not much difference. I'm going to go with her angles for now. We're going to cut this first ring, cut this outer ring at, at uh, 15 degrees, and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to use that as a as a guide to sit my drill press 
grow me an entry hole right here at, at, at 15 and cut that at 15 also. Then I'm going to come back and set this to 20 and recut this net, that inside right there, which will be the outside once we get there. Uh, so we can cut it at 15 and then 20. And we'll cut both sides of that one at 20. And then when we come back, we'll cut this in at 25. And we'll, I think we'll go to 30 degrees and we'll cut a separate piece for the base. But uh, we'll see about that when we get there. Right now I'm trying to get these uh, rings cut. Feels like I got to do a little sanding. I got a little bit of a rocking motion there. I want that to sit steady. So let me work on that before we start cutting it. Okay, just a little bit of sanding. I had my end of one of those segments was sticking up a little bit. So I sanded that down. It's sitting nice and flat now. So we'll cut this first outside cut at 15 degrees. Okay, I use this, as I said, as a guide on my drill press. And I drill me a 15 degree entry hole here. I used a number 60 uh, drill bit, but obviously this is not a number five. It was in my number five bin. I believe it's a seven. That, that's fine. I had to go back and drill a little larger hole. It wouldn't go through that entry hole. Uh, I'd rather have a little larger entry hole than to have the blade flex or the, the bit flex in the Material which is what I had happen on the last one caused me a lot of problems sanding and getting this smoothed out So we're going to cut this at 15 And then I'm going to reset the table to 20 and recut it not cut the edge of it But when we cut this one, we'll see how we're matching up if I need to make any adjustments I did last time and I still didn't get as much as I needed But anyway, let me get this this cut. We'll have the first ring. We'll see how we're looking All right, I took that ring and checked it out. It, it's a perfect match. I've got a real good setup here so far. It's uh, matched up much better than the first bowl. Um, I'm a little bit different thickness than I was on that one. So I've reset this table at 20 degrees and I'm gonna recut this outside one with that 20 degrees that's supposed to help round the bowl off. Um, then I'm gonna use that I just set my table, my, my grill press again, put me an entry hole, and then cut the inside at 20 degrees. Now, one of the issues with having these, not a solid piece there, is I use that to draw the uh, pattern. So I marked, you can see the darker areas, I marked with the rings, and then I took my compass, and it fit perfectly on one side, the other side I had to adjust it a little bit to draw the line to match these little marks. So, uh, we're gonna now I'm gonna cut this and do some more adjustments with degrees and we'll check out the next ring after that. Okay, so I cut that outside at uh, 20 degrees. I'm still set at 20. I used this again on my grill press to set the angle, drew an uh, drilled an entry hole. Uh, these drill Marks don't show up so much on the outside because you're cutting some of them off as you come around So it makes that part of it a little easier to sand and I'm using a little bigger bit than I did in the other one But then I don't want it to flex either that kind of helps with that So now I'm going to cut this center ring Inner part of this ring at 25 degrees to match what's cut on the outside I'm going to start 20 degrees and Then I'm going to come back and reset the table at 25 and cut the outside again and then cut the inner ring and that'll be it for the bowl we'll have to cut the base and i think we'll cut it at 30 degrees but we've got to get this these rings sanded uh, glued together and sanded before we mark the base and, and set it up so but step at a time here we're going to cut this second ring off at this 25 degrees i'm sorry 20 degrees i'm seeing my numbers there i'm getting messed up Right now we're at 20 degrees and we're going to cut this one twice at 20 and then come back, cut it at 25 and then an internal cut at 25 and we'll have the rings cut.
All right, got that ring cut off and it, it matches almost perfectly. I'm real pleased with the way things are matching up right now. It's going to be a lot less sanding than the last bowl, or at least so far. So I've now reset the uh, table at 25 degrees. I'm going to go around this outside again at 25. I'm not going to film it because i got to get really close to make sure I'm staying on the line and the camera kind of gets in my way. So uh, then when I get that done again, I'll do the same thing. Use this to set my uh, grill press <clears throat> and grill an entry hole and cut the inside. And it'll be a matter of working on the rings. We're going to use a different base. I'm not going to use this for the base. Uh, at least I don't think I am. Uh, We'll see how it goes when we get there. I may take the what's left of those segments off of there and use it as a base, but uh, and we'll see. Uh, in her procedure, you take another piece of this, and I got just enough probably to do that and make another base and use the bottom to trace the outline and cut it. But right now, I'm going to make this outer cut, and then I'll come back and cut the inner ring. We'll have all the, the three rings cut and I'll start working on matching those up. Be a little different because they're not solid on the bottom. Well, let's get to work on this and we'll see how it works out. Okay, so I got that, I got that 25 degrees cut around the outside. Now I'm going to cut this last ring off at the same angle and uh, see how that matches up. And we'll start then uh, putting the rings together. So there are the rings cut out. Uh, they match up very nicely on our side, much, much better than the other bowl did. Um, I've got a couple options for the base. I can use this, and even I'm, I'm going to use that, I think, that, but I've got a couple options. I can leave that on and put another piece below to carry that effect on further down, or I can take that off and just have that as a plain base. I'm going to once I get the rings together and sanded, I'll take a look at it. I'll, I'll try to imagine it both ways and see what I can do with it, what I like the best. I kind of like the idea of carrying that pattern all on further down, but we'll see. It may not look right once I get there. So right now I'm going to glue these together and uh, then I'll sand the inside. I don't have an enormous amount of sanding on this one, but it still is going to take some. To, uh, you can see places it's kind of may have a little bit to make these match circular wise, especially where those pieces come together, those spacers as I'm going to call them. So uh, uh, let me make sure I got them matched good. I think it's kind of hard to tell where you got light coming through these, but uh, I'll sand each side, make sure they match up real nice, and then I'll uh, glue them together. Well, so far so good. I like the way it's working so far. It's looking the way I would hope it would look. So I'm gonna get my flexible, uh, my flexible, my uh, inflatable sander, and I'm gonna match up everything on the inside and smooth it out. And uh, then we'll see about getting the bottom on it. So, uh, but let me get this sanding done right here. It's gonna take a little while. This is not a real easy wood to sand, uh, but we'll just have to tough through it. 
Okay, I got the inside sanded. Uh, it's coming out really nice. I like the way it's going. Uh, it's looking like, kind of like what I wanted it to. So now I'm going to work on the base. I've taken those pieces off the bottom. I didn't like the way that looked because it was dark in there and you'd have to cut part of them off, let some light in. It just didn't look right against the others. So I took that off. I got some more sanding to do there and finishing. And I've marked where I want to cut it. I'm going to cut, I think it's a, I have to check the angle. I think it's 13 degrees is what she did that one. But I'll double check that and you know, we'll glue that on and sand the outside and it'll be a matter of putting a finish on it. All right, so the bowl is basically constructed. I've got to do a lot of cleaning and sanding up, sanding and cleaning up on it. Uh, I think it's going to look real nice when I get through with it. It's going to look the way I wanted it to if I don't mess up between here and there. So, I'm going to get my flexible pad sander. Get me a 60 grit on there, and I'm going to work all that down, and I'll have to run, work through two or three grits probably to get it uh, smooth enough to finish. But here we go. I'll go take care of that. Okay, so there it is after a lot of sanding. Uh, once I got into the sanding, I realized that there was a lot of mismatch that I didn't notice. The bottom ring, for some reason, almost seemed like it was eccentric. It was lined up on one side, but way out on the other. I'm not really sure what was going on with that. It didn't match it with that base, which it was cut from very well. But I made it all match up. Uh, it has the effect that I was looking for. This is basically an experiment plus a chance to go through the procedure making this bowl for the files that I lost <clears throat> to, to make, finish that video. This was the same process, except on that one I used a separate base. I reused the same base on this one, and that wood was a little bit thinner. As you can see, it's not quite as tall as, as this was a little bit shorter. But anyway, uh, I got the effect that I wanted. I wanted it to actually look like a basket. Wasn't sure if you could do that. I could think of reasons you could and reasons you couldn't, but it worked very well. I'm very pleased with it. Of course, it's it's a little more fragile. You don't have as much glue area. If you dropped it as possible, it could uh, come apart. And you don't have as much support in some areas. It could break, especially if you drop this rim on something. But regardless, what I wanted is I got what I wanted, is what I'm trying to say. And I want to see how that would look. And I am pleased with it. They could have come out a little better. I don't know really what went wrong. Of course, I'm using a little oddball material there. And my measurements could have been off just a little bit to make those rings not match up perfectly. They match pretty well inside. But that bottom one just was not exactly right. But anyway, I made it work. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that fills what I missed last week, the procedure in making this bowl. It was the same procedure, just a little different material. So thanks for watching. If you like it, hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And I'm going to try to go off the rails a little bit on some more and make something a little different from what the plan says as I come up with the ideas. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.